Well, a very good morning to everybody and welcome to St. Paul's. As you can tell, we have a very special day today. We are not only celebrating God and worshiping God together this morning, but we are yet again, twice in a month, how lucky are we? We are celebrating the baptism of one of God's own children. Uh, this baptism, the, the little guy is a little bit smaller. He will not be standing up here by himself, uh, but he is just as cute. I'm not sure what, is it the fans? <laughs> he is complete with a little bow tie. Where do you see him? His name is Landon, and I can't wait to introduce him to you as we welcome him into the faith and family of Jesus Christ. It is a wonderful day to be here. This is literally the last day before we get into Advent. I mean, I don't know how many people are getting ready for Christmas. I myself have my Christmas shopping done. Uh, that's not a brag. It's just a survival tactic as a pastor. Um, so um, I've got all of that done uh, even before Black Friday, believe it or not. Uh, but next time, next week, when you come in, you will see purple up here, which is our traditional color of Advent. And we have many, many activities, which I will introduce to you in just a moment when we get to the um, uh, the, the uh, announcements and such like that. But for now, sit back, relax, let us greet one another. And we just do it by waving at one another. And if you would like, welcome to all of those joining us from home and you can wave at the camera as well. And let us start out with some music to prepare our hearts for worship. And as you do, I invite you to join me as we pray together in one voice. As we gather this morning, we remember that our strength comes from God. We trust in God to protect and provide all that we need, knowing that God will provide all that we need. Amen. God knows what our needs are, even before we ask. In celebration of God's love and faithfulness, let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for always being exactly what we need when we need it. We pray that you would bless us this day so that we might also be a blessing to others and that you would forgive us for sometimes forgetting you and your promises. Enable us to be faithful witnesses to all that you have given us. Amen. And now I would like to invite Landon and his parents, Allison and Chuck, and also our godparents, Brittany and Nick, to come on up and join me. Oh, tissues? No, I needed my glasses. <laughs> I will have you guys stand over here. Okay. You, yeah, you guys can stand over here. Yeah, usually I make you stand down there so I'm taller than you are, but we'll, um, we'll allow this. Members and friends in Christ, we gather now to celebrate, celebrate the gift of grace in the sacrament of baptism. Jesus said, let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. And Jesus took them in his arms and blessed them. Allison and Chuck, I ask you now, do you desire to have Landon Charles baptized into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? We do. Will you teach Landon so that he may be led to profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? We will, with the help of God. Will you encourage him to renounce the powers of evil and to receive the freedom of a new life in Christ? Allison and Chuck, and also Brittany and Nick, do you promise according to the grace given you 
to grow with Landon in the Christian faith, to help him to be a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ by celebrating Christ's presence, by furthering Christ's mission in all the world, and by offering the nurture of the Christian church so that he may confirm his baptism? If so, answer, we promise with the help of God. Jesus Christ calls all of us to make disciples of all nations and to offer them the gift of grace in baptism. So do all of you who witness and celebrate this sacrament this day, promise your love, support, and care to Landon as he lives and grows in Christ? I invite you to pray with me. Oh God, pour out your spirit upon us. Bless by your Holy Spirit this water and create new life in Landon Charles Werner baptized this day that he may rise in Christ. May the gift of this water remind us of your love, bring us joy and help us in difficult times. Let the touch of baptism bring Landon into the special circle of your family which is the church. Amen. Before we get to the anointing and then the baptism, to this water which we have now blessed and made holy with God's presence and our love, we add some special water. As all of you know, Jesus himself was baptized. Even though he had no sin himself, he was baptized so that he might identify with all of us and truly be our savior. And he was baptized in the waters of the Jordan River in Israel, where he lived by his brother, John, that we know as John the Baptist. And so a few years ago, when I led another trip to Israel, after I had baptized those in our group who wanted to reaffirm their baptisms, I gathered up some of that water so that today, as we baptize Landon, we can add this water in also. And he will be baptized not only in the water that we have blessed through our love and through Christ's presence with us, but also some of the water that our Savior, his Savior, was baptized into. All right, we'll see how this goes. You know me, right? Oh, hey. Hi, little man. How are you? How are you? I have something exciting to share with you. I guess it is exciting. Did you know that God created you? Did you know that God knew you even before your mama gave birth? And did you know that God created you in love? And God has a plan for you, Landon. He does. It's so exciting. God has a special plan just for you. And so before we get to your baptism, we're going to take some of this holy water and we're going to touch your feet because God has a path that he has for you to walk. And we're going to ask that God shows you that path. There are lots of places you can walk in this world, but only one that's going to lead you to God's plan for you. And then we're going to touch your hands because just as God has a plan for you, God has equipped you for that plan. You have gifts and talents that neither you nor your parents or any of your family have ever dreamed of, but God will reveal them. And that's what our prayer is today. Yes. And then we're going to touch your ears because, you know, there's lots of things that you can hear in the world, but God is still speaking and will speak to you. So we're going to ask that God lets you hear all of God's good word for your life. And then we're going to touch your eyes. Very careful. And we're going to ask that you will see God's love for you in all of creation, because truly, I promise you, it is there. And then we're going to touch your mouth. And we're going to pray. We're going to pray that what God reveals to you through what you hear and what you see, that God will enable you to speak that good word so that everybody can know how much God loves them. And then we're going to touch your mind. And we're going to ask that God would fill your mind with the awareness of God's love for you and all about your Savior, Jesus, because you're part of his church now. And then we're going to touch your heart because from this day forward, Jesus is going to come and stay right there with you. You're never going to be alone. 
And as often as you will look to him, he will let you know exactly what God has for you. And now, Landon Charles, in obedience to our Savior Jesus, following his example and following the tradition of the church, I baptize you in the name of the Father and in the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now we're going to try something, and I don't know how it's going to go, but you are now part of a bigger family. You know these folk, right? They're all family and over here, but guess what? See all these other people? They're all part of your family now too, because we're all part of the family of Jesus. And so you can look to any of these folks and have them help you. Look at those guys right there. I'll bet when, they, when you grow up a little bit, maybe you have babysitters right over there. <laughs> when you get older and you want to sing, right over there is Gail. We'll still have her doing it. All right. We have people who uh, teach all kinds of Bible study. John will teach you all tools if you'd like. We have all kinds of wonderful people here. And all of them care about you. And all of them have said that they're going to help raise you in the faith. In addition to these folks up here, who I think you know already. So we're going to say a prayer, and I'm going to invite all of you to join me in the prayer. And I'm going to come over here so that you guys can see the prayer. Let us pray. We receive Landon as a child of Christ. We offer our understanding and support as he experiences life. We enfold him in our love seeking together to grow in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and all people. We join with his parents in telling the gospel stories in our midst so that he may live with us for Christ, showing forth God's love for all people. Amen. Amen. I messed your hat up, but you're still so stinking cute. It doesn't matter. I have a certificate that I'm going to give to your daddy. I'm going to give you back to your mom, okay? Okay. Thanks for being such a good boy. All right. Thank you, guys. Hi. How are you? Come on up and have a seat. If you want, could you come over a little bit more this way so that way I can see your beautiful faces? Wonderful. Well, it is good to have you here. I, I brought something to show you, okay? And I brought a bag because I'm gonna need to make, make a mess. What is this? Leaves, yeah. What were you gonna say? Leaves, yeah. Uh, where did it come from? A tree, you're right. And to be clear, it came from a tree in my front yard, okay? So just in case anybody's worried that I vandalized. All right, so I need your help. What's this green thing? A leaf, right, okay, yeah, very good. Okay, now what is this like skinny part right here on the end of the leaf? A, yeah, stick or a stem, that's right. And what's this whole thing? What a uh, branch, you guys are very good. I can tell you've been paying attention in school. Okay, now, if I do this and I take this leaf off, Will this leaf keep growing? No. No. Hmm. Okay. What about this? What if I take the leaf and the stem off? Now, will this thing grow? No. All right. Okay. Well, what about this? The leaf is still connected to the stem, and the stem is still part of the branch. So is this branch going to keep growing? It will? Okay. Interesting. Oh my gosh, you just gave my whole thing. <laughs> this wise guy just said it's not connected to the tree. You are so right, my friend. That's right. The leaf and the stem and the branch, they're not going to keep growing. They're not going to get strong because they're not connected to the tree. Now, what, do, what does a tree need to grow? What do you think? Water, seed. Yes. What else? Sun. What else? Water, right? What about like, can a, can a tree just grow anywhere? Like, where does it need to grow? Where? Grass? Yes, like dirt, soil, right? Yeah, and is, 
What? It cannot grow in the Arctic. You are right. Yeah, so it has to have the right temperatures, right? Can't be too cold, can't be too hot, right? Now, if you put a seed directly into that dirt, right? Is it automatically gonna be a tree? No. no? It takes a while, right? So it takes time for things to grow, right? So like little Landon, is not always gonna be little Landon, right? He's gonna get bigger and taller, huh? Okay, so the reason why I brought this branch today is because it's gonna help us understand one of the scripture passages that we're reading a little bit later. In the book of John, Jesus is with his friends and he tells them that if they are going to keep growing and if they're going to stay strong, that, that they need to stay connected to him. He tells his friends that he's like a vine and we're gonna just pretend like he says that he's a tree and that the, his friends are the branches. And so he says that to stay strong, to stay connected to Jesus, you have to stay connected. He, he says that he is the tree and they are the branches and so they need to stay connected. So here's my question. What, do we, what can we do to stay connected to Jesus? What are some things you can do? And maybe you're already doing them. You're actually doing one thing right now. Yes, we're worshiping him. Yeah, we're here at church. What were you gonna say? Praying. What's something else that we can do to stay connected to Jesus? Did maybe some of you come to Sunday school today? Yeah, yeah, that's right. And when you're in Sunday school or when you're in church, we have a special book that we open up and we read, not just here, but we can, yes, yeah, we can stay in our Bibles. Yeah, there's all kinds of ways that we can stay connected to Jesus. So one of the things that is true is that generally we need help to stay strong and to stay connected. So how about we pray to Jesus to ask him to help us to do that, okay? Jesus, first of all, we love you. Thank you for helping us to stay connected to you. Just like the leaf and the stem and the branch need to stay connected to the tree to, to grow and to stay strong, Jesus, will you help us to stay connected to you? We love you. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Let me go get the real reason why you're here. I told it. Oh, oh. The candy fairy showed up. Awesome. Come on over. There you go. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Oh, thank you. Thank you, candy fairy. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Today's first reading is from Psalm 92, verses 1 through 8 and 12 through 15. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night, to the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. At the works of your hands, I sing for joy. How great are your works, O Lord. Your thoughts are very deep. The dullard cannot know. The stupid cannot understand this. Though the wicked sprout like grass and the evildoers flourish, they are doomed to destruction forever. But you, O oh Lord, are on high forever. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. In old age, they still produce fruit. They are always green and full of sap, showing that the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. This is the word of the Lord. And now we have a very special treat. You don't have to listen to me today. 
because uh, one of our uh, uh, members in discernment, Lisa Higgins, is going to be sharing God's word with us this morning. Good morning. Our sermon text today comes from the Gospel of John, the 15th chapter. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The word of God for the people of God. Um, will you pray with me? Gracious God, open our ears so that we may hear your voice. Open our minds so that we may receive your eternal wisdom. Open our spirits so that we may know your leading and guidance. And open our hearts so that we may receive your wonderful love. Amen. So if you're a house plant, I would urge you to reconsider making your home at my house <laughs> because I am a notorious plant killer. I took that branch from our front tree. So sorry, Dan, if the, the tree ends up dying, but you know, it isn't personal. I like plants in theory. But in practice, in the actual caring for them, that's where I fall short, specifically in remembering to water them. I will go days, weeks between watering sessions. So on the rare occasions when we have had houseplants, Dan will frequently ask me, did you water the plants today? So I respond, nope but I fed and watered the children. <laughs> Does that count? Right. So here's the thing. If you're human and you're at my house, I promise I will regularly feed and water you. But if you are a houseplant, you probably should make your house, house somewhere else because I am not gonna remember to do that. I'm not a gardener. I am not a source of hope or life for houseplants. Which brings us to today's scripture. This particular passage from John is sandwiched between the final events of Holy Week. In chapter 13, Jesus is with his friends, his disciples. They have eaten their final meal and he's preparing to wash their feet. But the events of that night are not resumed until chapter 18. The intervening four chapters are termed as Jesus farewell discourse. And for any of you who have ever taken a child to college or helped them move in to their first apartment, you may understand the intent of some of these chapters. One last opportunity to say important words, to express love, to ask and answer important questions. John 15 is part of this farewell discourse. Jesus begins with some declarations about identity and roles. So to recap, verses one through three, Jesus is the vine, or if you were paying attention, the tree. God the Father is the vine grower or the gardener. The disciples are the branches. 
In verse four, Jesus gets to the heart of the matter. He says, abide in me as I abide in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. These are verses of purpose to fortify the disciples for the persecution that is coming after his death. However, the disciples will not be left alone. The Holy Spirit, known as the advocate or the helper, is coming. But until Spirit's arrival, Jesus is reminding and inviting the disciples to abide in him. The word abide is a little bit difficult because it's not a word I use frequently in conversation. The first English definition of the word abide is to remain or to stay. But the second definition is to make a home, to dwell, to reside. So in this scripture passage, Jesus is not just telling the disciples to stay put. He's inviting them to make a home in and with him. Making a home, that implies putting down roots, establishing a, a location that is hospitable, restful, and welcoming. Abiding in and with Jesus is about relationship and location. Jesus's repetition of the word abide is actually an invitation to a way of life. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. Abiding in and with Jesus is an orientation to living fruitfully. Mother Teresa certainly oriented her life in and with Jesus and it yielded tremendous fruit. In 1950, she founded the Missionaries of Charity, a Catholic religious congregation whose members take vows of chastity, poverty and obedience and who pledge to love and serve the poorest of the poor. This ministry encompasses caring for children, refugees, former prostitutes, the mentally ill, lepers, people with AIDS, the aged and the convalescent. At the time of Mother Teresa's death in 1997, there were approximately 4,000 nuns actively engaged in missions that numbered almost 600 across 123 countries. This ministry to the very least of these is certainly an admirable, inspiring and a worthy cause that has, that has harvested tremendous fruit. Maybe that is a calling we should all consider. Or should we? Mother Teresa recounted an interaction with an eager brother who came to her declaring his belief that he had a special vocation in working with the lepers. She answered him, I think that you are somewhat mistaken, brother. Our vocation consists in belonging to Jesus. The work is nothing but a means to express our love for him. That is why the work in itself is not important. What is important is for you to belong to Jesus. He is the one who offers you the means of expressing that belonging. It is in the belonging, the abiding in and with Jesus that we meet Jesus himself in our work. Mother Teresa knew this to be true. She said, to those who say they admire my courage, I have to tell them that I would not have any if I were not convinced that each time I touch the body of a leper, a body that reeks with a foul stench, I touch Christ's body, the same Christ I receive in the Eucharist. It was in the belonging, in the abiding in and with Jesus that Mother Teresa experienced Jesus in every aspect of her ministry. Her work was not motivated by good intentions or noble actions of the will, but motivated by her relationship with Jesus. 
In loving and serving Jesus, Mother Teresa loved and served lepers, prostitutes, refugees, and many others who she regarded as Jesus himself. Belonging and abiding in and with Jesus nourished and directed the fruitfulness of Mother Teresa's work and ministry. Now, the danger in highlighting someone who has achieved sainthood is that few of us are saints, nor are we as earnest as that brother. This reality could morph into shame, discouragement, or even apathy. But Mother Teresa herself would correct these notions. We are not called to her particular kind of sainthood nor his particular special vocation to care for people with leprosy. Echoing Jesus's words in John 15, Mother Teresa declared that all believers are called to belong to Jesus, to abide in and with him. That is our highest calling. That calling gives birth to fruitful opportunities to meet Jesus in the work and service we do on a daily basis. So. Whether we are providing direct care to the leper on the streets in a foreign country or caring for an elderly family member in our home, whether we build the hospitals or the machines that operate in them, whether we transport goods to and from locations, whether we carpool children to and from school, whether we cultivate and nurture crops and animals or teach and nurture students of all ages, whether we own the business or work in retail, whether we spend time in an office with adults or time at home with children, whether we minister in official capacities or whether we volunteer, whether we get paid for our work or whether we are retired from active employment, the question is not whether what we do, our vocation, our calling, our actual daily work is important because it is. The question is, where and with whom are you abiding? The question is, who are you encountering every day who may be Jesus in disguise? Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. So what fruit are we bearing when we abide in Jesus? According to Galatians 5, 22 and 23, that fruit is love joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. This fruit is a cluster of gifts from a singular source, not multiple plants bearing a particular kind of fruit. By abiding in and with Jesus, we are nourished with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. What we ingest is what we produce. So we become loving, joyful, peaceful, patient, kind, generous, faithful, gentle, and self-controlled as we abide in and with Jesus. The benefit of all that fruitfulness, Jesus in us, and Jesus disguised as a leper or that elderly family member who's cared for with dignity and compassion. Jesus camouflaged as children and students who are carefully nurtured. Jesus in the faces of our office mates, the assembly line workers and volunteers. Jesus in everyone we meet, Jesus everywhere we are. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, this sounds like a great theory, but life is different outside the walls of this church Monday through Saturday. You don't know the stress and strain in my family life. You don't know my boss or my coworkers or the company where I work. You don't understand the kind of pressure I feel every day. People don't care about me, much less the fruit I bear or whether I abide in Jesus. I don't see Jesus in the people I meet. 
there is plenty of evidence for fruit that is sour or rotten. Fruit that has been compromised from improper care or picked prematurely or infected with disease. We know fruit trees that have been so damaged that there's no possibility for fruit. These can be the people and the circumstances surrounding us. This can even be the fruit we have eaten or the fruit we have offered to others. These examples about family life and work, they're real, right? We all know this. More importantly, Jesus knows this. And he understands and cares about how hard that is for us. Interestingly, he predicted the very same troubles for his followers in these chapters of his final discourse in the book of John. Jesus tells the disciples that his own death is near, but, but, Holy Spirit, the advocate, the helper is coming to them and for them. Holy Spirit will not only prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, but will guide them, will guide the disciples, will guide all of us into all truth. Ultimately, Jesus' death and resurrection, which is just hours away in this particular scripture passage, that death and resurrection will bring about justice and peace for the entire world. But equally important, is that in the here and the now, the disciples and we ourselves are not alone or without hope and help. Holy Spirit will encourage and empower us to continue to abide in and with Jesus. Holy Spirit will continue to nurture our fruitfulness. Difficult circumstances and difficult people are a reality, but we are not without hope. Abiding in Jesus, making our home in and with him, growing in fruitfulness through the power of Holy Spirit, it's not just hopeful, it is transformative for us, for our families, for our workplaces, our community, and our world. Mother Teresa had no courage, no ability to minister to the poorest of the poor apart from belonging to Jesus. By abiding in and with Jesus, she saw him in every person she ministered to. In loving and serving them, she loved and served Jesus. This, this is fruitfulness. And fruitfulness transforms barrenness into God's glory. John writes in, in his uh, 15th chapter, verse 8, My father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This glory is not just an eternal vision, it is an invitation and an opportunity for all of us today. How our fruitfulness is offered to the world is as different and wonderful and as val valuable as everyone who is here today. Our God is inclusive and creation is filled with the glory of that diversity. So we can be like Mother Teresa or that earnest brother who have a special vocation. We can work as a truck driver or a teacher, an office employee or a volunteer. We can labor in a factory, on a farm, in a home or in the church. All are necessary and important. But if we do not belong to Jesus, if we do not abide in and with him, if we do not see him in every person and every opportunity that is presented to us, we bear no fruit and the world remains barren. In closing, I have three questions I want to pose to you, to me, to all of us. Where and with whom are you abiding? Where and with whom are you abiding? The second question is, what kind of fruit are you growing? What kind of fruit are you growing? Is it love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, 
faithfulness, generosity, gentleness, and self-control? And finally, who are you encountering every day who may be Jesus in disguise? Who are you encountering every day who may be Jesus in disguise? Abide in me as I abide in you, just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. Amen. Before we get to our next song, um, which I think is Breathe on Breath of God, if I recall correctly, I just want to let you know that you all have just been blessed. And if you need an example of what it looks like to abide in Jesus so that you can bear fruit, you just bore witness to it in this moment. And now as we go from this place, may we be encouraged to abide in and with Jesus. May we be strengthened to bear much fruit. And may we be heartened by encountering Jesus in all we meet. Amen. Amen.